Hello everybody, and welcome back to Prometheus. Today, as always, we have a number of chores on our list. The first of which, I came all the way back up here. We can have a nice little view of the base down there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually disassemble this whole ramp that we built leading all the way back up here. Because uh, I have a plan for these ramps a little bit later on. So I think I'm going to reuse these. If we ever want to come up here again, we can always do that. But for now, I'm going to reclaim all of these. Swim through this rock, and I will be with you guys once we get back down there. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> At least we didn't fall off from the very top. Let's just go ahead and get the rest of these in our inventory and head on back. Alright, so I think the first order of business for today is we need to get a second MOA. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of an accident in the last episode, and two, our brand new MOA friend, met an untimely demise. So I think let's go out, find another MOA, just so we'll have a backup, because MOAs tend to have accidents pretty frequently on Prometheus. So I definitely think we're going to want to have a backup. And before we head out, I'm actually going to craft up the recurve bow here. I realize I hadn't previously crafted that, so we definitely want to get one of those for ourselves. That's going to be very nice. It is also getting a little late here, so I think before we set off, we're going to have a nice little sleep and then go on our MOA hunt in the morning. We have an animal climbing the waterfall, too. There's been a, a fairly recent update that actually allows you to climb waterfalls. So that's also maybe an option. I don't know if we can get all the way up there on this one in particular, but as you can see, you can swim upwards through the waterfalls now. That's always a little bit of fun. But yeah, let's go ahead, hit the sack, and then look for a MOA first thing in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It is a very pink and foggy day here on Prometheus. I'm feeling good about today. I'm feeling good about the progress we've made. I definitely have some big plans in the works for this episode. So let's kick things off, get our spare MOA, and I'll get back to you guys with the game plan once we've taken care of that little errand. All right, we found ourselves a MOA. Let's go ahead and take care of this quickly. Loving the 1,000 damage on the recurve bow. Very nice. Ooh, that guy went for a little jump. We are extremely close to level 30. Killing just one more of these wolves, I think, is going to put us over the edge here. Let's go ahead and take care of this. Oh, there we go. Level 30. So that officially gives us access to tier 4 technology. We have the fabricator there. That is amazing. And once we get back to the base, we'll get our new MOA friend in his pen and take a look at all of the beautiful new technology that we have at our fingertips. Alright, and just like that, we have our new MOA. He's taming up. I'm gonna take a nap, eat some food, drink some water. But yeah, let's get inside and browse through our new technology here. So, welcome to Tier 4, everybody. First thing, of course, we're going to grab the Fabricator. We're going to need that for pretty much everything we're gonna be crafting from now on. Now, the thing that I absolutely want to prioritize on this playthrough is the Organic Residue Cleanser as well as the miasmic axe, pickaxe. These miasmic tools are extremely powerful. Um, you can see in the modifier descriptions here, this tool has a 100% infected bark per wood chopped. So what that means is you're going to get this extra resource in addition to the normal wood you would regularly get called infected bark. And when you put that inside of the organic residue cleanser, it's going to produce pretty much unlimited epoxy for you. And for anybody who's played through Icarus, you know that in the electricity age, 
epoxy is always in short supply. So having that infinite epoxy is going to be absolutely massive. And then in addition to that, with the miasmic pickaxe, you can essentially double the amount of ores you gather from things like oxide and sulfur. So you'll get a 100% noxious crust drop for every resource that you gather with this tool. So you put the noxious crust into the processor and it will then turn into the normal version of that ore. So noxious sulfur will become sulfur, etc. So it's an extremely powerful, almost overpowered tool in my opinion, but it's going to make our playthrough so much easier here. So we're absolutely going to prioritize all of that. Then in order to work towards making those miasmic tools, we're going to need the electric furnace as well as the materials processor, which will allow us to create composites. And with those composites, we can then craft the chemistry bench, which will then allow us to get the materials needed for the miasmic. So that distilled miasmic coating is produced at the chemistry bench. We also need composite paste, of course. As for our power option, I think I want to go with the water wheel. They're super simple to make. They give 2,000 power each. Another option, of course, is the biofuel generator. That's 5,000 power, and on a single biofuel can, it lasts about four hours, if I remember correctly. So you can get a, a lot of power output from this. This would be pretty good in combination with the batteries as well, further down the line, but I think just to get electricity kicked off, Let's go with the simple water wheel. We can make a couple of these very cheaply, and that will be all the electricity that we need just to get our uh, simple electric furnace, material processor, whatever we need right now. We just hook it up as we go, and that should be enough power for us. For our water option, I'm gonna get the water borer. We're also gonna need composites for this, but this is 1,000 power for 2,000 water, which is double the amount of water you would get from the normal water pump here. Let's see, this is 1,000 power, 1,000 water. And the biofuel, of course, runs on biofuel, but that also gives 1,000 water. So the water borer is a really nice new addition to the game. I'm definitely going to try and get that set up and take care of our water needs with that. As for our offensive options, I already unlocked the rifle ammo, but the more that I think about it, I really want to get the trench shotgun. I've always used the hunting rifle, and the trench shotgun is a relatively recent addition to the game. I really haven't used it, so I think I want to give the trench shotgun a, a try. Somebody in the comments was saying it's a lot of fun to use, so we're going to go trench shotgun, and we're going to grab the standard 12 gauge buckshot for the shotgun as well here. So we have a lot to work for right now. I think first things first, we're going to have to work on the materials for the electric furnace, materials processor, and kind of work our way towards getting this chemistry bench and organic residue cleanser all set up for ourselves. Now with all of that in mind, I am actually going to kind of return to the area where my drop pod landed Somebody in the comments let me know that there are actually a few caves out in this area. I actually haven't been to these caves before. So, oh, let's escape this jaguar. <laughs> I haven't been out to those caves before, so I'm going to head over in that area and see if we can find those caves and get a ton of resources that we need. Okay, so we've made it back to the drop pod, and I see that there is indeed a cave exactly right next to our drop pod. So let's get in here take care of the worms, and get to mining. There's a lot of worms. I'm stuck. Okay. Okay. We got the worms, and now we have bees. I thought that bees and worms weren't supposed to spawn together, but apparently that's not the case. We need to find this beehive. Get that taken care of as soon as we can here. I'm seeing a lot of nice resources in here, but I'm not seeing that beehive. 
Okay, so I'm not sure where the beehive is. Maybe those bees were just alone and there is no hive. So let's get to mining, fill up our inventories, and get some of this back to the base. So there's also a deep mining ore iron deposit here. So that's something to take note of. Maybe when we start making our... Oh, seen these bees. Maybe when we start making our concrete buildings, we might eventually want to, to come back here and set up a deep vein mining system for that, but for now, we're just going to mine it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so we've cleared out almost everything in that cave. There are a few nodes of iron remaining, but I want to see if I can get another cave out here and maybe grab up a little bit more copper and gold and aluminum, since that's something we're definitely going to be in need of pretty quickly here. So let's keep searching around this rock sort of formation here and see if we can't get any other caves near our drop pod. I think we have found another cave here, yes. Okay. So this big rock had two caves on it, so that's very nice. Let's go ahead and take care of our worms as usual. This is a little bit of a smaller cave, but I am seeing some nice copper, aluminum. Let's go ahead and grab up all the things that we need and kill this worm. Put a bite on there. All right, worm taken care of. There's a lot of copper in here, actually. Very nice. Let's go ahead and grab up everything we can. All right, and with that, we are totally full. Let's go ahead and get all of this loot back to our base. That waterfall is absolutely beautiful. It's nothing like coming home to a gorgeous scenic location like that. Loving it. And we are constantly getting jaguars out here. Let's take care of this guy. Oh, and there we go, level 31. Very nice. So, with our three talent points that we have right here, I think I'm going to go ahead and get the biome perks here. So, we'll grab Pack Lightly. And then we can get Forest Master as well as Arctic Master. So that gives us cold resistance in the Arctic movement speed and then some health regen out here in the forest. I'm not sure if Desert Master applies to the volcanic biome, so I think we'll hold off on that one for now. For our solo point, I think I'm going to put a second point into Miner Rewards. So we'll get 10% more yield when we're mining ores. That'll be very nice. And it also looks like our Moa tamed up once more, and his name is Two. So we're going to call him Two Two, since he's technically not the original Two. Let's get a saddle for him. Now, as we start thinking about getting our electric furnace and our material processor up and running, we are going to really, really need to start cranking out electronics here. So it was a good thing that we got a ton of copper, a ton of gold from those caves. Uh, but the other thing that we're going to be in very short supply of is epoxy. So I think we'll take a quick rest here, and when we wake up in the morning, we're going to go out on a big oxide and sulfur run and get as much of that as we possibly can. Good morning, everybody. It's another beautiful day here on Prometheus, and we are ready to get to work. So let's get some oxide we're going to need oxide to craft organic resin, I believe is what it's called. And then we're going to need a ton of sulfur and tree sap in order to start crafting up a ton of epoxies as well. Here's that geyser that's very close to our base. So this is where we're going to set up our water borer for sure once we get access to that. It did start hailing on us while we're out here on our mining run, but we're not going to let that stop us. The grind continues, no matter the weather. So the MOA does have that neat little jump trick that can help you navigate these ravines. 
Um, but yeah, let's keep on searching. Right now we have a pretty good amount of oxite. I'm just kind of on the hunt for more sulfur at this point. Let's keep on going. We're also going to need some silica for concrete. There is a ton of silica available in the Arctic biome right next to our base. I think I'll just grab a little bit of that while we're out here as well. Might as well bring home the bacon too. We've got a bear in our tail. Let's get out of here. Um, so if you don't know, if you hold the Alt key, that'll allow you to freely rotate the camera. So you can make sure that the bears that are chasing you are far enough away not to do any damage. So I'm also going to craft up a second mortar here. Um, and we're going to use this one just to create a ton of tree sap inside of. Place it down right there. And we are extremely low on wood, so let's get some wood chopping and get that tree sap. So I'm going to get 500 of this crafting into tree sap. That'll be a thousand tree sap. That should keep us good for a while. Put the rest of the wood in here for now. And we're going to take a ton of the copper and the gold that we crafted up and get all of this turning into wires in preparation for electronics here. So as you can see, electronics take two epoxy, two organic resin, and then 15 copper wire, five gold wire. So you need a ton of copper, a lot of gold, and a ton of epoxies to get the 60 that we're going to need for the forge, and then 60 more for the materials processor. So we have quite the grind ahead of us. But that's part of the game here. That's, you know, I, I really don't mind the grind, to be honest. But yeah, in addition to the co electronics, we're going to need 80 concretes for the furnace here, as well as 30 steel ingots, as well as some titanium plates for the material processor. So we do have some titanium working in our biofuel drill for us right now. We'll be able to gather that up in a little bit. Um, but I think first order of business is let's hit up some of the caves in the Arctic biome, see if we can't get ourselves some titanium, uh, a ton of silica, because we're going to need a lot of it for concrete. And then I also have some steel blooms that I prepared here, 50 of them. We'll get these going in our forge over here. And let's get on over to the Arctic biome and see if we can't get some silica titanium and anything else we can get our hands on. So we made it back to the first ice cave that we visited. There is some titanium here as well as a absolute load of silica. Let's take care of this wolf, make sure he's not a problem. And with that taken care of, let's get to mining. Oh, that gave me an achievement. <laughs> that kind of surprised me. So that was the last ore I hadn't mined yet, I guess. So we've mined every every ore. Let's pop our buffs again and get back to mining. All right, so that's all of the ores. And as you can see, there is a ton of silica for us in this cave. So let's grab up as much of that as we can. Excellent, and just like that, level 32. We have another talent point, solo point. We are looking good in terms of progress. This bacon is really doing work for us. Uh, but I'm going to finish up mining all the silica in here. Oh, looks like I missed a little aluminum over there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to finish up cleaning this cave out, and then take what we got on back to base. Okay, executive decision. We're actually going to hit up that second cave that we found before and snag up any remaining ores as well as more silica. There's also a lot of sulfur out in this biome for us, so we're probably going to need more for epoxies. So let's keep that in mind and come back when we need it. All right, here we go. We got double worm spawn right at the gate. Oh, I forgot about the bees in here. Okay. 
take this as well. Might as well. And let's get back to mining here. Oh, we got some titanium right next to the spawn here. Beautiful. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clean out as much of this cave as we can. And get back to you guys once I'm done with that. Awesome. 26 more exotics for us. Let's go ahead and grab this gold, silica, whatever we can. I don't want to head down to the bottom part of this cave right now. There are way too many bees down there. Um, I'm just going to grab what's up. Oh, is something happening over here? Okay, we're safe. <laughs> Seeing all these exclamation points, kind of kind of tripping me out a little bit. But let's move our MOA just in a little bit. Grab these last couple scraps of ore and head on back. Okay, we're heading back. This cave is a little laggy. I don't know if the bees are causing a lag spike or what the deal is, but let's get out of here. I'm also going to want to go and check on our deep vein mining, see how that's progressing. We should have a good amount of ores. Um, I don't know if our cans will be empty quite yet, but let's go ahead and check in on those. Home sweet home. Just a short tranquil little swim back and we have officially returned with a ton of loot let's see what we can do with all this so we have a really nice haul of silica here we're definitely going to need a lot more stone though if we're planning on making enough concrete for that forge but let's get all of that baking up let's get our gold cooking we have a ton of aluminum in backup get that gold cooking um this titanium, we might as well get a little bit of this cooking up as well. It's going to take a long time to actually cook down, but let's get that in there for when we're ready for it. And then all this aluminum, I'm just going to stash it for now. We don't really need much more of it for the time being. Get our exotics in here as well. We have a nice little stack of exotics here. 80 exotics, looking great. I might need to craft the orbital exchange relay to get those delivered to the station. For our solo point, I think I'm just going to grab low maintenance. We want to get both of those points in there. That'll make our food, water, and oxygen last a lot longer, so that's going to be very nice. And then for our skill points, I think what I want to do is start working towards fresh is best, which will keep our crops permanently in a well-grown state they will never wither no matter how long we ignore them so that'll be very convenient um, and i do think i eventually want to get food pyramid that will let us have four food buffs active instead of just three so that's going to be also very useful so with that in mind i think i'm going to grab two points in naturally preserved this will let us keep food in our inventory for a much longer pe uh, period of time without it spoiling this will be very useful once we get um a lot more powerful foods like the savory roll and the fruit muffin those spoil extremely quickly so being able to keep those in your inventory for 50 percent more um, before they spoil is definitely going to be helpful down the road now with all of that tree sap and sulfur that we gathered i'm going to start crafting up a ton of epoxies so with what i gra grabbed in my inventory here we can make 165 of them we're definitely going to probably need more than that, but for now, let's just leave it at that. And then, let's head over to our deep mining drills and see how they're looking. So, further down the line, you can do something like craft beacons to remember where all your drills are placed. For me, I just have notepad open and I take a note. Um, so I know that next to the geyser in F4, which is right about here, we have our gold going. Um, we also have the copper down by the geyser in G5, and then all the way over in the left side of E4 by the lake, um, all the way over here, we have our titanium. But let's check in on these. Um, it actually looks like it's out of fuel, so we were able to get almost 150 out of that. Let's grab all of that, go ahead and snag our copper and titanium, um, and then refuel our cans. So you can also craft backup fuel cans, so when you go out on your deep vein mining check like I am, you can just have spare fuel cans, replace them, grab the ores, and take care of it that way. Um, but right now, I don't know if I want to spend all that iron. I'm fine just 
waiting a little bit of extra time for them to refuel manually. Uh, but with that taken care of, let's head over to our titanium. That one is probably empty as well, and then we'll go grab our copper too. Okay, so we got 123 titanium out of this drill. Very nice. All right, and then we have almost 200 copper from that, so that's very nice. Let's get all this back to the base. So another kind of useful thing about having a backup mount is that you can use their sort of triangle on the map as a makeshift beacon, so that'll always be on your compass. And as I was looking at my map, I noticed a mysterious second triangle over here. So it seems like a, another animal may have just sort of self-tamed or something. But I'm not sure what's quite going on. So we're going to go ahead and sleep and we'll check on, on that mysterious triangle. Um, once we've slept. But yeah, that's that's another tip about having a second animal is it kind of acts as a beacon. It'll always be there on your map as long as it's alive. And you can use that as a waypoint to make your way home or mark a backup base, kind of whatever you want. All right, but with all of that taken care of, let's go ahead and hit the sack for today. And I will see you guys in the morning once a lot of this stuff has smelted up and we're a little bit further along. All right, good morning, everybody. We got a little bit of a rainstorm heading in, um, but the thing that we're kind of consistently low on right now is wood. We are making a ton of tree sap out of that wood. We're also going to need wood to make our organic resin. So I'm going to spend the morning here chopping down a ton of trees, getting a ton of wood. All right, and with that, we have an absolute load of wood here. Let's stick that in here. So one other thing I'm going to start doing also is crafting sticks out of my wood. It's actually a little bit more efficient if you're making a ton of tree sap to first turn your wood into sticks and then turn the sticks into tree sap. One wood equals two tree sap, while four sticks equals one tree sap. So if you get 10 sticks out of one wood, you know, you're, actually, you're technically getting 2.5 uh, tree sap out of every single piece of wood instead of just two. So it's a little bit more efficient and it's also a nice sort of trickle of experience to have these sticks just kind of consistently crafting in the background. So I have a bunch of sticks in here. I'm going to go ahead and queue up all this into tree sap. So we have enough stone for 35 more cement here. That's going to be enough for our forge. I'm just going to go ahead and craft all of this up. We are going to eventually want more stone. One of the things I definitely want to do is turn this bridge into a stone bridge, repairing it constantly every time there's a bad weather is getting a little annoying. So I think that's going to be on the list as well for today, but for now, let's focus on getting our uh, new electricity system set up as well. So I actually just crafted the oxide dissolver, and that really shows you the power of this oxygen tank. I came in here, I filled this up when I left Olympus, and I haven't had to refill my oxygen a single time the entire time I've been here until now. So this oxygen tank is 100% recommended for anybody playing this game. Definitely, definitely make sure you grab this if you haven't yet on your playthrough. I'm also going to start refilling my biofuel cans here. Every can takes exactly 100 tree sap and 100 wood. Uh, it takes a lot more sticks, it takes 5 sticks. I just like to do 100 wood, 100 sap, that way you know exactly how much you need. So this will be 3 filled cans once it's done, and we'll go and refuel our generators too. Um, and I do have 3 backup biofuel cans, I think I'll start filling these up as well. That'll make our life a lot easier when we go out to take our ores from those miners. So I'm also heading over to that mysterious triangle that we spotted earlier. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh my god. Okay, so it does seem like we... <laughs> okay. Uh, two. So we have an, another two here. I don't know why the name is always two for these guys, but this guy seems to have somehow tamed himself for us, so that's interesting. So I guess we're going to claim ownership of 2-3 here. Awesome, let's set him to follow. And I guess we have three MOAs on our hands now. 
Okay, so we have 2-3 in the pen here. He is starving to death, so it's a good thing we got him back in time. Um, I don't know if 3-2s is really necessary. I think 2-2s two is going to be fine. But hey, if he's going to go out of his way to tame himself for us, who am I to say no? Okay, and with all of that taken care of, we have our concrete uh, mixed up. We have the 80 that we need. Let's start looking into electronics. So for electronics, we're going to need quite a few of these. So I'm going to craft up 300. That's what all that oxide we were gathering was for. So let's get those going. So with all these little tiny things crafting up, we have tree sap crafting up, we have our organic crafting up, we have our bars smelting over here. We're just raking in the experience points. So I'm just going to sit here, milk up as much of this experience as we can while we wait for this stuff to craft, and see how many electronics we can make once those organics are complete. And as we wait on all that crafting, I'm going to keep on gathering wood. We are definitely going to continue needing a lot of this through this whole process. Awesome, and we are level 33. We are really starting to rake in the levels here. With all of that stuff crafting for us in the background, with the bacon buff, uh, you know, being able to instantly chop trees out like that, we are really starting to level up quickly. Feels good. Okay, and with all of that stuff that we've crafted up, we currently have enough um, to make 63 electronics, and of course, the thing that we're short on to go any further is copper. So, you're going to quickly realize copper is a very valuable commodity out here. Um, but we're definitely going to want to get our copper drill up and running again as quickly as we can, and maybe hit up a couple more caves, see if we can't get ourselves some more copper, because we are going to need it. All right, so we have two biofuel cans up here. I'm gonna go ahead, head back out, fuel up our copper, and how much titanium do we have? We have 25. I think I'm actually going to move my titanium vein over to the copper vein that we found kind of right next to it. Let's let 2-2 two -two eat some food here or drink some water, and we're gonna hop on him once he's nice and full. And yeah, I'm going to move that titanium driller over to the second copper vein. So we're going to have two coppers going. That's going to be a huge help for us. And in addition to that, um, I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I have some plans for all of those ramps that we had. Uh, we're going to actually build a little bit of a staircase and check out a giant tunnel that leads toward the volcanic region. Oh man, we have a snowstorm out here. This is not good timing. I'm going to quickly pop the fuel. Um, oh, that's a snow wolf. Let's kill him. <laughs> okay, I think we're safe. I'm going to pop fuel into the gold here. Probably going to need more gold. And then I'm going to see if I can't make it over to that titanium without getting caught out by the storm here. So there is another cave right over here, um, kind of close to where we were mining. I'm going to go ahead, take shelter in here uh, as we wait out the red part of the storm. See if we can get some gold, get some copper. Maybe we'll get this platinum as well. Um, but we're going to make use of this cave, wait out the storm, and get some resources while we're at it. This cave is actually quite cavernous. Uh, I'm a little intimidated by what I'm seeing down there, but um, we do have a few ramps. So we should be able to make it down there and just see if there's anything good for us to grab. Oh, no. Okay, so as I came over here to grab this gold node right here, this ramp actually got stuck in the wall. I can't deconstruct it. I can't repair it with my hammer. So there's some kind of invisible barrier. Uh, we lost one of our three ramps, which is very unfortunate. But I think with the two we have left, we should be able to get out of here. And yeah, this cave is absolutely massive. We do have a little speck of copper here, very nice. Let's grab that. And 
I don't think I want to risk losing my other ramps before I can get a safe passage out of here, so I'm just going to go ahead and ramp my way out. Okay, we made it out. Let's grab this gold and head over to our titanium vein and get that set up on copper. That was a very abrupt end to the snowstorm there. Let's pick this thing up and move it on over to that island. Alright, get that copper deployed. That's going to be producing some good resources for us, and let's head back over to our base, grab another biofuel can, and get our other copper vein up and running. So I'm also going to start crafting the rest of this platinum here. This is going to be six more bars, still not quite enough for the platinum knife, but we're getting there. Alright, and I'm also going to start filling up my reserve biofuel cans. I got the full one here. Let's try and beat this storm, go get our copper vein running once more. It's getting crowded in here, man. <laughs> Let's get that copper vein running once more, and we'll have some backup fuel for when we need it. Alright, fueled up and ready to go. And with that taken care of, with all of our drills going, with all that stuff smelting up, I think it's time to say goodnight to this day. And once we get up fresh in the morning, we're going to head over to the tunnel leading into the volcanic biome and think about checking out the giant tunnel over there and getting a ton of resources from that. Good morning, everybody. We have our massive stack of 40 ramps here. I think this should be... it should be enough <laughs> to get us up there. It's been a while since I've ramped my way up there, but building this thing out of wood is definitely not a permanent solution. We're going to eventually want to upgrade it to a stone staircase if we want easy access to the volcanic region. Uh, but for now, we're just planning on a quick one-and-done trip into this cavern. We're going to grab as much as we can out of there. I'm hopefully going to be, be able to find a lot of copper, maybe some gold, and then titanium and platinum as well. Um, we should be able to secure some of that a little bit further into the cave. Um, but for now, I'm just going to head over there and get our grand staircase under construction. Alright, so we have arrived at the construction site. Basically, we need to build a staircase all the way up to the top of that rock shelf over there. So I'm going to first build one up to here, and then we'll continue upwards in that direction once we have that down. So I'm going to get to work, and I'll be with you guys as soon as we have this ready. So a simple way to make these staircases without needing support is have them clip into the side of the rock like that. That counts as having them fully supported. So you're able to just build all the way up without needing pillars if you just stick them into the side of the rocks like that. So I think we're going to have to figure out a way to get our MOA up here, but from this place we should be able to get up onto that rock and then from there get up into the cavern. Alright, beautiful. And just like that, we've made it to the top. The entrance to the cavern is just right around the other side of this rock formation here, so Let's go ahead, stick our heads in there, and see what we can find. Alright, here we go. Let's see what we got. So a ton of iron right out of the gate, and then there's some beautiful copper waiting for us right at the entrance. So let's grab all this up. Also going to grab some gold while we're here. We are in dire need of gold at this point. We do have a deep vein and we do have a pretty good backup supply as well. Uh, but for now, let's just grab as much copper as we can, keep our eyes out for titanium and uh, some platinum as well. Okay, so you can tell you're officially entering the volcanic biome by the ominous lighting, 
the rumbling volcano sound, and of course your heat bar rapidly rising. So we don't really have the gear to go too far into the volcanic biome quite yet, uh, but we should be able to just stick our heads in there and get what we need. Alright, so there is this little cave down here, and I have explored this in the past, and I know that it connects to a pretty vast tunnel system, and in those tunnels there are um, normal caves that spawn cave worms, as you would normally find, uh, but they also contain the resources that we're looking for, like titanium and platinum. So I'm going to build a staircase down there, leave our MOA up here for now, I think. Um, he should be safe from any danger. I don't think anything spawns up here in this area of the cave, so we should be fine to spelunk our way down there and see what we can grab. Okay, so we're officially in the volcanic biome. You can tell because there's platinum right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and continue on further. Oh, and there is level 34. We are really leveling up quickly out here. This is awesome. Um, and because I didn't show it on the map, just for anybody who wants reference here, so this is where we built our staircase up right here, and then the entrance to the cave is right here. So we've spelunked our way pretty deep. We're approaching the volcanic biome, um, but we're going to keep pressing forward as far as we can and see what we can grab. Oh, there's some titanium right there. Alright, so things are starting to get really hot over here. You can see the lava over in that cave. So I'm not going to push it any further. I'm just going to go ahead and head back, uh, pick up some gold, pick up some titanium that we left, and get on back to the MOA. Alright, we made it back safely. Let's go ahead and hop on our boy here. There is some more copper, gold. Yeah, we can definitely come back here when we need to, but for now, I think we are pretty set on resources. Check out what I got here. So almost or uh, exactly two full rows of copper. We got a little bit of aluminum, a good grip of gold, a ton of platinum and titanium. We are going to be set for quite some time with all this. So let's just make sure we get it home safely. All right. It looks like our staircase is just fine. Let's take it nice and easy over here. Make sure we don't drop to our deaths with all of this precious cargo. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty smooth. Those giant tunnels typically don't have enemies in them. There are little offshoot caves that do spawn cave worms uh, and kind of look just like a normal cave that you would find anywhere else. They have deep vein nodes in there as well. Um, but the giant sprawling tunnel part of it is usually safe. So you can take your MOA straight in there um, and mine to your heart's content without having to worry. All right, we have made it home to our beautiful little waterfall side base. Let's get our MOA inside, 2-2. Two, two. And kill this Tyrannus. And start smelting up all of that loot we just got. So we'll put all of the copper in here, get all of that smelting up. We have some gold smelting in here. I do want to hang on to some gold because we're going to need it to make composites pretty soon. Uh, you could either use gold or platinum to make composites. Usually I use platinum, um, but since we kind of have a massive excess of gold, I'm just going to hold on to the ore and see if we need it. Uh, but yeah, we'll get all of that copper smelting up. Let's get this titanium going too. I want to start working towards that trench shotgun sooner rather than later. We actually have 40, um, so we can look into smelting that up or crafting that up, rather, um, pretty quickly here. But yeah, with all of that said and done, I think we're in a really good place as far as resources go. Let's first look into repairing this bridge, because it's always damaged. Uh, but once we take care of that, letting all that stuff smelt up and craft up, we're going to start looking into getting our new tech set up and running. Okay, so we have enough resources to make 42 more electronics. This time we're short on epoxy, and that is going to be a theme, as you will quickly realize. Epoxy is always in short supply. We do have some more sulfur and tree sap that we can turn into epoxy, so I think I'm going to do that. 
So we'll get 125 more epoxies crafting up. That should do us for a little while. Um, we also have our electronics going here. We have 105 of them, I think. 104, 105. Nice. So that's huge. We're definitely making good progress. With 120, we'll be set on our two crafting benches, but we're also going to need electronics to power those things. So I think what I do right now is look into making those windmills that we researched. So we're well on our way to getting those uh, the furnace and the material process are all set up, but of course in order to actually use those we're going to need power. So I think we look into making a couple of these water wheels here. Um, again, we could have gone with biofuel generator, but I wanted to do something I don't use that often. Water wheels do require a little bit of maintenance. Every once in a while you need to go in there and unclog their inventory to make sure they stay running. Uh, but other than that, they're pretty nice. I think they'll be a, a nice sort of visual to have by the base too. So let's go ahead and craft up a couple water wheels and get those set up. Uh, but I also just realized in order to make the water wheels, we're going to actually need the fabricator, which is 30 more electronics, 30 more concrete. Aluminum we definitely have. Carbon fiber we have not created any of yet. So let's get some carbon fiber going. In order to do that, we're going to need to grab the carbon paste tech here. I'm also going to go ahead and get gunpowder, because um, we're eventually going to want that, hopefully pretty quickly. So we're going to get 12 of those crafting up right now. Uh, we're going to need more organic resin, which is wood and oxide. So I think, um, yeah, we're running low on wood. I've been crafting up a lot of sticks for tree sap as well. So we're going to go out, get ourselves some wood. We're also going to need some stone for more concrete. Um, so we have a few chores on our list. Let's go ahead get that taken care of really quickly. All right, so we are full up on stone, wood, and a bunch of other stuff. Let's head back to the base and get to work. And with the aluminum and carbon fiber ready to go, we're going to get ourselves the fabricator. Amazing, and we leveled up with that craft right there. Very cool. Let's get that down as soon as we can here. I think it should fit right here. Excellent. And that is amazing. So, with the fabricator, we can now look into getting ourselves the water wheel, electric furnace, materials processor. There's a lot more work that needs to be done here. We have a little bit of a storm going on out here. Uh, but we also crafted enough platinum to make the platinum knife. So let's finally upgrade our knife to the platinum knife. That's amazing. Let's get this iron one out of there. We have a little bit of a lightning storm going on. Um, but yeah, with all of that taken care of, we got our fancy little platinum knife. I'm just going to let all of this continue crafting and get back to you guys once the storm is cleared in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful day with that storm now behind us. And an even better news... Let's leave that light on. In even better news, we have everything that we need for our two water wheels. Let's crap those up. All right, and then just on the other side of the base, we have a stream with flowing water. Uh, the water wheels need to be placed in moving water, so it can't be put in that lake. But we can place them right over here. So let's get these down. Nice and close to the edge here. So every once in a while you're going to have to come over, check the inventory, and remove any spoiled plants or anything that's clogging it up. But we're going to have that set up right here. There's a little jaguar lurking over there. Um, but with that set up, now we need to get our electricity tool so that we can actually get those hooked up to a power grid. Alright, so we have our electricity tool. Excellent. And then with the electricity tool, 
we draw a power line from our water wheels make sure we get them connected to each other so it's all in one grid um, and with a recent update you can actually click the R button and see uh, the status of your power network so we're producing 4,000 total power between these two things I'm gonna go ahead and drag a line back into our base so we'll have it ready excellent and just like that we have power right underneath our base uh, like I mentioned when I first built the base I'm eventually planning on making a half wall underneath all of this so this will look like just a solid foundation and then all of our wiring and plumbing will be hidden underneath the floorboards in there and with all of this crafting up we are almost ready to get our electric furnace set up and running so I'm gonna continue crafting up a few things that we need just the last few pieces uh, we need four glass which is silica that we don't have so I'm just gonna go grab a little bit of silica craft up this glass and we will have ourselves a running electric furnace all right and after a quick little trip to the snow biome we got plenty of silica let's head back and get our new stations up so one other thing we're gonna need is the recipe for the titanium plate so let's grab that and craft up three of them excellent and then eight carbon fibers amazing and with all of that we are ready to get these going so let's get our electric furnace here and our fabricator absolutely amazing all right so we have our electric furnace down we've officially graduated from the stone furnace now all we need to do is get it hooked up to our electrical system here so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this wire here drag it over right underneath and then if we go back around we're gonna have it come straight up through the floor into the furnace amazing so one of the recent updates they made is that when these devices are not actively using power um, they don't actually have a power requirement it used to be that even when you weren't using these um, devices they would need to have power in them at all times so you have to constantly be unplugging and switching which things you have plugged in but now you can just kind of leave everything plugged in and they'll only use power uh, when you're actually using the crafting station so that is a really nice and useful update amazing so with all of this we can now create composites and oh, we got a little visitor over here let's take care of him fortunately this moat is definitely doing work for us here oh, he's sinking swimming so with all that taken care of we can now craft composites composite paste which we're going to need in order to work our way towards that miasmic pick so we, I think our next goal is going to be let's get ourselves a chemistry bench let's get ourselves an organic residue cleaner we're also of course going to need our water borer set up to get us a water supply uh, but I think we've made some really great progress today. We are officially hooked up to electricity. We have our water wheels over there working for us. We have made quite a bit of progress. And with that said, I think that's going to do it for today's episode. And we have really, really pushed forward in today's episode. We have electricity. We have our electric furnace. We are ready to really start diving into our Tier 4 technologies so I'm extremely excited to get started on the next part. Thank you, everybody, for all the support. And this channel is already at 300 subscribers, which is way more than I could have ever anticipated. So thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, and liking the videos. It really does mean a lot, and I hope that you all look forward to the next one. So until then, goodbye.